Hello guys, so in this video we will focus more on the selection options and we will see how can we do select by attribute and what is the options that we can use in select by attribute and how can we create expressions for our selection. So as we saw before, the regular way to select is to click here and if you draw a polygon, you will see that everything inside this uh, polygon you draw have been selected. You can also change which layer is selectable and which is not. You can disable or enable them from here. And here you will see how many uh, features are selected for you. So let's go back here and clear our selection. And if you work on selection, better to have this tab here open. So you list your layers by selection and you can work on them and change the selection anytime. So here also other than this, we have, if you right click on any feature layer, you will see that you have a selection menu. And in the selection menu, if you have anything selected, you can zoom to it or you can pan to the selected features. You can clear selection if you have anything selected. So let's select a couple here. And as you see right now, it's selected everything inside this polygon. And I will disable all the selection for all the other layers except Orange County Cities. So I'm going to keep this one. And you have to clear your selection and select again. So right now we have one, two, three, four, five features selected as you see right here. If I right click here and I go to selection menu and I say zoom to, it will zoom to this location. If at any point you are selecting your feature based on select by attribute or select by location and you want to see where they are, you go to pan to selection and it will pan to the selected features you have. And here also we have clear selection to clear the selection or switch selection. It, it will switch the selection for you on the map. You can also select all the features or select the visible features. So if you work, for example, on a large amount of data and you want only to select the features that is visible in your extent, you can click select visible features. Also, you can create a separate layer from the selected features. And that's one of the options that we will use later. We will see that we need to do some filtration based on selection and convert this features we selected into another feature layer. And also, instead of coming here and select which one is selectable or not, you can disable or enable them from here. Uh, also, you can open the attribute table for the selected features you have. So this is the selections options we have here in the selection menu when you right click on the layer itself. Uh, so now let's clear the selection and see what other options we have that we can select with. So the regular one is just a click on any feature will select it for you or you can draw a rectangle and it will select all the features inside this rectangle or you can come here and change by drawing a polygon so this way I will draw a polygon like you see right now and it will select everything inside this polygon or lasso, lasso is a freehand polygon so right now I'm drawing the freehand and it will select everything inside this lasso and here you have a circle when you create a circle everything inside the circle will be selected or you can uh, draw a line and everything intersect with this line it will be selected and you can draw your line as you draw a polyline it doesn't have to be a straight line and everything intersects with this line will be selected and the last thing is trace and sometimes you need to use trace in case you want to for example like uh, select all the features that touches a certain line so for example right now as you see I'm doing trace and when I double click it will select all the features that touches this line. So that's why it selected these two features. Also, for example, we want to, to select all the features that touches this freeway here. So we can do a trace on this freeway, as you see right now. And once you double click, it will select all the features that is intersecting with this trace you draw but because you traced the line so all the features or all the cities that intersect with this line will be selected and you can clear the selection from here at any time uh, also let's go back here and bring it to rectangle so what we have next here is select by attribute and select by attribute allow you to select any features or any records based on their attribute data so for example, let's open the attribute table for this feature layer right here. And let's start to do some select by attribute. So here you choose which layer you want to do selection on. And we will do selection or orange county cities, the one we have right here. And you can switch between any layer you want to do the selection on. So for example, we have orange county cities selected here. And here we have uh, the selection type where you can select, I want to create a new selection based on the expression. 
or you can add to the current selection or you can select a subset from the current selection or you can remove from selection so this is the options that you can use your selection based on but then the important thing is to add an expression so here in the expression when you click new expression you will see here that you have a row that you say you define what is your expression or what is your selection will be based on so for example we can do a very simple query right now and say where city name is equal to and here it gives you the options you have into the city name so here it will show you all the values you have in the city name we can click Costa Mesa and say apply so it will choose for us the city that named Costa Mesa and it will highlight it on the attribute table as well for you so here is the first option to choose which field you want to create your expression based on this field you have all the fields and you can choose any field and here the next thing is the operator so you choose from here that you want to search for something that is equal to certain value is not equal to and we will go through each one of them so for example right now we chose is equal to Costa Mesa or I can say is not equal to so what that will do is will select everything that have a city name not equal to Costa Mesa so it will select everything except Costa Mesa here begin with and begin with uh, for example if you have a lot of cities that starts with San like San Bernardino San Luis you can come here and say I want to search for the city names that starts with San and say apply and you will see that we have only one two three cities that starts with San make sure that it's case sensitive because for example if you have it in a small s it's not gonna work because it's a case sensitive and it have to match exactly the case but also if you wanted to search for the cities that have san capital and san small you can add another close right here and say or show me the cities that is begin with and you can type it small here so if you have your city name in a lowercase or uppercase this will work fine with you and you can find the cities that have uh, san begin with also you have does not begin with and that's similar to is equal to or not equal to uh, you have end with so you can search for the things that ends with a certain word or certain character so here let's say for example I will do end with beach and I will remove this one and I say apply and you will see that it will choose all the city names that ends with beach word Huntington Beach Newport Beach and Seal Beach and the other options here we have does not end with the opposite from end with includes the values here you can select several values so when I click on this drop down you will see that I can select several values from here I want to select the city name that is orange and Newport Beach and Lake Forest and when I say apply it will select these features for me so you have a lot of operators here and depends on the type of the field so because this is text field it gives you options to search for text and other things but if you select a numeric field it will give you much more options like for example here is above average or is below average because the area is a numeric value it gives you other options to do your expression and also if it's a date it will give you the option to select a date or select a date in between certain dates so you have different options here based on the field type so you have different options based on the data type of the field and also you have different options for the operator and here you can type text or you can s select from the existing values in your field and you can add how many clauses you want and see if you wanted to do or or and for the original one so it will apply this search and then apply this search and apply this search and select these features that match this expression you have the other thing you can do is you can enable SQL expression and you can totally type any expression you want in SQL statement and here once you start typing anything it will give you suggestion for what is the values that match this word so when I type city name it said oh you have a field called city name are you looking for this one and if I press enter it will select it for me and then I will say equal and I can type here Costa Mesa and when I say apply it will select Costa Mesa and also here I can say or average house price is bigger than or equal 1 million and say apply so what that will do is will select Costa Mesa for me and will select any other city that have average house price more than million dollars 
So here it's select Costa Mesa and all the other values will be having an average house price or over a million dollar. So here you have a lot of operators and you can combine your SQL statement however you want and you can mix and match between them. And the good thing about ArcGIS Pro that it gives you IntelliSense when you do your expression. So for example, if I press A, it will give you also like other options that are available from SQL. So as you see here, for example, we have this box. That means this is a function and that you can use to calculate certain things and each different function will do different thing for you. So as you see here, you have the function name and what this function is used for. And also here you have the operators option so you can add and or or add or different things. Every single letter you will find the different options to choose from. So here you have cast ceiling. So you have like hundreds of functions, hundreds of operators that you can choose from. So you can really create a very complex or a really advanced way to create your expression to do the selection however you want. And you can also uh, save this expression you created. If you create a complex expression and you want to save it with anyone, you can save it from here. Or if someone created or shared an expression with you, you can load it from here to see it right here and you can edit it. Or you can remove the expression and you can go back to your regular uh, way of doing the expression. Uh, also invert where clause, that means we'll just invert the options. So for example here, if I said I want to select the city name that is equal to Brea, I'll say apply, it will select one feature for me, this one right here. And if I select invert where clause, I say apply, it will select everything else similar to uh, is not equal. So invert where clause will just uh, switch the selection based on the expression you have. So it will select everything that does not match your full expression. So if you have a SQL statement that is complex or combining a lot of things together, you can use invert where clause to select the things that doesn't match your expression. And here you have the option to validate your expression. So for example, if I write here city name is equal to uh, Buena Park, I can make sure that this is a valid expression. So when I click here, it will say this expression is valid. And mainly you will use this one if you are writing a really complex, like let's say for example here, I will say and something wrong and I say validate. It will say this expression is not valid as and it's not going to return anything. So it's always better if you are writing a SQL statement, make sure to validate it before you say OK or apply to make sure that your expression is valid. As you see here, now it's valid. Also, you have the option here to group your clauses. So here I can add different clauses and then you can select any of them from the left side right here and you press control on your keyboard. You select another one and you can select as many as you want and you can group them by clicking on this icon right here and grouping them will help you create like uh, expression that you run a group of expression and then you run another group right after it. And the reason to do the group is to make sure that these two expressions will run separately before you apply this expression. So if this two is not grouped, so if I select this two right here, I can select on this one to ungroup them. What will happen? It will run all of them together as one expression. So all of these expressions, the four of them have to apply. But if I grouped this two, this two have to apply separately from the rest. I know it might be a little bit confusing, but in some cases you might need to group your expression to make sure that you are filtering your data and do the selection based on a very certain information that you need to search for. So I'm just showing you now how to do the grouping and ungrouping. But at some point when you work on the data, you might find that you really need to do grouping to make sure that you are doing the selection using the right expression. And that's it for how to do selection by attribute. There's so many different options, but now you know how can you do SQL statements, how you can add different clauses, what is the difference between the operators, and how can you use select by attribute to make any kind of selections on your attribute table or on your feature class whenever you want. And in the next video, we will do select by location. So we can see how can we do selection by location based on the location relationship between the features. So we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.